Aimlessness leaves the future unhealthy. Wealth and order of the present corrodes. Meaning of the past withers or explodes. So pumped to the max, Cadmus entered Delphi. Though before the grand temple of Apollo, towered by the sacred feminine sphinx, Cadmus stood. And he busily rethinked three Delphic maxims, seven sages follow. These precious precepts inscribed on the porch, peels wondrous thoughts off the wondrous thought. The extraordinary simply taught down within, the old soul they deeply scorch. Know thyself is the primordial rule, I guess so, for I do nothing but grow. And if I fail to attend and know, I'll be living in this world as a fool. Nothing in excess has been engraved next. I guess everything has an ideal state. And if I wish to sincerely create, I must ward being unduly complex. Pledge and be cursed is the final remark, I guess when I write my will in stone. And if I never give up or disown, then all of its future trouble I spark. Then Cadmus, fatigued, picking his brain outside the house of the god of healing, he entered for a sacred revealing. Never would his life be the same again. The priests witnessing the weight in his step kept them silent, knowing that was the gift. The sagacious all catch the graceful drift. They proceeded to help the priestess prep. With crisp, pious spontaneity, they escorted her to the Castalian Spring, in which the naiads magically sing, pitching the waters for the voice of deity. The Pythia washed in the sacred waters. She danced and splashed enigmatically. Then she stopped very erratically. In the sudden silence, a goat was slaughtered. A priest exclaimed, O oh, the great son of Zeus, babe born already with the golden sword, truthful and creative master of the cord, through the portals of the teeth let truth induce. Quietly they took the holy trail, softly leading them to the temple's core, where the Pythia inviolably wore a peplos white and a purple veil. On the adamantine tripod she seated, on the poisonous oleander she chewed that initiated the mystic mood in which normal dimensions were deleted. She began to fantastically spasm. Her eyes rolled back to her skull entirely white, contacting the god of knowledge and of light for a session of an enthusiasm Cadmus was beckoned to come through the door. The augustness involuntarily took his soul a part of the cosmos, though now he felt the whole. With the realest reverence he bowed on the floor. What hast thou come for lost prince in the world? Are thou ignorant, a skeptic, thou not sure? Purposelessness Apollo promises to cure. With a toss of his arm to the sunlight, one is hurled. Pythia spoke, and so Cadmus replied, I wish to see one noble course in full length that batters out all my beauty and strength, O high priestess. Can thy power provide? There was only silence from her and a nod. Cadmus saw none. His forehead stuck to the ground, all he heard was the oracular sound of the priestess in trance with the god. Royal, toil, coil, foil, jagged jaw, flee or agree, he or she, big trouble be. The blind eye in the night dreads to see to the god of law, cries a god of war. Red looms, black dooms, Nike zooms, palace blooms, what on earth shall the goddess unearth for thee? Behold, strong spirits are unleashed and free. Nothing can create like the mother's wombs. Then the touch of prophecy left her soul. But the rapturous word be much an alarm. The calm wisdom of the woman is the charm. So her wise speech shone with elegant control. Always keep following. 
the path that thy footsteps reveal, never succumb to the cruel curse of the ignorance of how, to thine very own heart, thy heart forever must kneel only to such self-commitment does creation take a vow. Soon a half a moon thou shall vision on a solitary cow. On that spot for the wise goddess of warfare, sacrifice her. From thy elevation thou shalt let the water. Drake deter, let the secret. Son of the god of war, swallow thee alive, fear. Not the belly of the beast, where almost all don't survive, love thy fate. And embrace thy terrific with nerves of steel, thou shalt defeat thy big foe. And thee, Athena, shall prefer. Thou and thy sharp squad shall found a city, and thy life shall thrive. Thus spoke the Pythia, who broke the form. Cadmus smiled, his face was smudged with glee. His heart yest, and no longer was he free. Abnormal creation was his future's norm. <laughs>